Rich Spisano here from Digitally Feelers. Today I'm going to show you some cool technique. Uh, I'm going to attempt to create probably a really ugly logo concept or something. But the reason I'm doing it is because there are things that I will be doing that I think you'll find really interesting and find useful in some of the things that you're doing, especially when it comes to global swatches. So let's get started. Let's start with this. First, I have a, just a blank sheet. Um, let me see. I don't, it doesn't really matter what size, but I'll tell you this one is 1920 by 1080. And I kept it at 72 DPI because I'm not printing it. Uh, but if you were printing it, you would go 300 DPI. So I would like to create some really, probably a very ugly logo. So I am going to try, let's start with the cog tool. I'm going to create the cog tool and let me see I'm holding shift and I'll give it a color for now I mean we can always change it later um, blue and let's see so now I want the inner radius the hole to be bigger maybe like that and I want there to be more teeth so how about like that and that's it that's all we need there now after we do that now what i'm going to do is give it a live filter and i will use twirl and i'm going to bring the radius up pretty high and what i'll do is i'm going to move my mouse to where i want the twirl to be let's say i want this twirl to be like right here and then I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to touch the twirl on my layer and uh, do Control or Command J, which means I have another duplicate of it. And I am going to move that one maybe to here, just for the fun of it. Again, I'm not trying to be precise. Uh, and I could make the twirl go more like that or less. And if I want to go back to the other one, I don't know which is which. That one's the one there. This one I can bring up more. So you can just do all different kinds, but I'm just going to do the two just to give you an example here. Um, now, even though it's twirled, whoops, I didn't want to do that. So now let's go deselect the twirl. Now, even though it is twirled, you should still be able, yep, here it is. You still should be able to like change, for example, if I want more teeth or less teeth or pointier teeth. It still does it even though the twirl is there. That's what I love about live filters. In Photoshop, their live filters are you have to right click and say smart objects and then the filters become live. Here we can just do it right at the bottom here. Or we can go layer, new, I believe new live filter. I usually use the one on the bottom right down here. But you can use it either way, whatever your preference is. So let's do so now we have that. Now let's do something else. We're going to maybe, again, this is going to be pretty ugly. So let's do, let's get some text. We'll type out some text. And I will call it curve gear. Maybe I'll put it on the next line. G. You know what? I'm going to do all caps. C-U-R-V-E, G-E-A-R. I want that centered and let's put it somewhere here so I don't I don't know why I call it I think because it's a gear and I put curves in it and it, like I said this is not going to be very pretty but I just wanted to show you certain techniques and I'm going to get to the most important part of this this lesson is about global swatches and I'll show you why that is so important but just bear with me just for a few minutes while I create this really ugly logo so let's see what ugly font we might be able to give it <laughs> that's not too bad let me see uh i'm just flying down here well what was that big one that was strange no i don't yeah i think i should try that i don't know no no that's something else that's one i created once before we don't want to do that um Yeah, let's do this. It's kind of like a Greek. It's Hercule. What is it? Herculaneum. It's a Greek thing. And let's give this one, I don't know, let's give it a new color. 
I'm gonna I, I like to use the colors here. I know I can pick it off of here, but I prefer using these. So maybe we're going to go. There we go. Let's just pick that and say close, right? And we can even stretch that one a little bit. And then only a couple more things I have to do before I get to the um, global thing, which I think is important. Um, let's give a back, let's add um, layer, new fill layer. And for that, I think I'm going to choose somewhere in the tan like that. And we'll pull that to behind everything. And, and then I'm going to take, let's try, let's do a circle, an ellipse. And I'm going to create an ellipse like this. And I'm going to give that a different color. Uh, let's do some kind of soft blue. Like I told you, this was not going to be pretty. So, but let's do this. And the last thing I will do probably is let's do some text in there. Just probably regular Arial. Uh, let's see, Arial. And we'll say sports wear for geared since we have a gear. <laughs> so let's wear, oops. Um, oh, geez, what's going on here? Okay. So, yeah, geared toward cur curvy people. How's that? Suppose we're geared toward curvy people. I'll center that. Um, maybe it'll be Arial Black instead. So make it really. So, like I said, this is not pretty. Actually, I think I just because that's on a light background, I will give this a dark outline, maybe a black outline. So let's just add that just to make it come out. And so there is our masterpiece. It is the most beautiful. In fact, I don't know. Maybe we should, uh, maybe I shouldn't finish doing this tutorial because it is so good I can use this for one of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not really, because it is really pretty bad. And I can get really fancy, and I could do all kinds of things. And once again, remember, these twirls can be moved around because they're live filters. And that's what I love. And you can do a whole bunch of these if I want to. Here, one more time. I don't know why I'm doing another one, but let's try this. Let's do Control or Command J on that twirl. And whoops, sorry. And then let's open that one. Whoops, you got to open the twirl. And I don't know which one it is, but either way, wherever you select that twirl, the new twirl comes in. Oh, I'm wrong. That was the original, so I'm going to undo that. And I don't know which is which. So let's, let's hide that one. It's up here somewhere. So let's select that and just, here we go. You have to select one of the twirls and then move it. So you could just pick another twirl. It's pretty cool. I thought that was really interesting. I was just playing and just discovered this kind of idea that it's still live, even though it's a gear and it's twirled because of the live filters, you could still change the holes and the tooth sizes and how many teeth. Here's more teeth if I want more teeth. And it still stays with the twirls. So I like that. So now comes the part with the global. We can go to regular swatches and create here. Here are the, by the way, right here, recent up on top is what we have used in this document. And we can actually put global swatches here. And, but I, I don't really want to play. I never like to play around with the original stuff. So I'm going to hit the little menu up here in the swatch palette and say, add a document palette. Now a document palette means that this palette I'm creating is only for this document. It's not going to show up when I open another document. If you did add application, it would. I don't want to do that. I just want to add a document palette. So there's my document palette and I want to rename it so I know what it is when next time I open this document. So I click again up here and say mm, rename palette. And since my name is Rich, I always like to put Rich in front because then I'll know it's my own palette. And I'm going to call it 
global swatches. Now you don't have to create a new palette, I just wanted to create a new palette. So now you click all the colors that are here. Um, in fact, you know what, I'm going to actually take this one and because uh, it, it'll show you it'll yeah, it'll show you what I'm talking about here and let's say we wanted to just make this down here yeah I just want to put that in front of there and I'll do it I'll duplicate it oops I'm sorry I'll duplicate it again I'm holding alter option and there's a reason I'm doing this okay so you'll see in a minute so let's go control zero to get you back so this is really pretty ugly. So now up here, still the recent, these are the palettes I'm using right now because everything I've used, it put up here in recent. So if you touch like that blue, if you select that blue one, and then go right here, not here, this says add current fill to palette. You go right here, add a global. That same color is here and it has this little, I'll get a close up, but it has this little white triangle and you'll see that means it's global. I'm going to do the same with each. Whoops, I'm sorry. I have to have nothing selected here. So now I select this one and I'm going to add it. Then I select this one and I'm going to add it. And the blue. This one and I'm going to add it. So now what happens, which is very cool, say you have a client and you're not sure which color and you're going to save, export them as JPEGs different times. Okay, so since this and this is part of this global palette, if, I just, if the client says to me, I don't like that color, let's change it. Well, I can double click on that color in the global palette and I can change it to any color I want and say they wanted it more of a red. Now you notice how both of them changes, which is really important because let's say you had a, a document with a whole bunch of text and you didn't want to go to each one or how to sort all the layers to figure it out. Uh, this is a great way to just change everything in one shot. For example, the pale blue. Let's do the pale blue. We double click on the pale blue. And why is this not changing? Hmm. So, okay, so I did something a little wrong and I just want to correct what I did so you could tell. If there's something that was not connected, you have to make sure to select it and, and make sure it is uh, in a global color. So now, for example, I did, I selected this and made it that color, selected this, oops, sorry. I selected this bottom one, made it that global color, and this one, and I made it that same global color. So now that they're all the same global color, if I go and change this color, I'm changing them all. So now I have I could, the customer could say, I don't want to do the blue, I want to do the green and red, don't ask me why. And also the same, I want to make sure that, the, see the sportswear is showing that it's that color and the curve is showing that's that color. So now, if I touch, not, I'm just going to change the color and it's changing all the lettering like you said before, like I showed you before. So... They want maybe this purplish, whatever, I don't know, maybe black. Maybe they want it black. And also we get the background, but the background is just one. But if I had more than one thing in the background or more than one with that global color, that was fine. And another thing would be, what if you wanted the gear, which is a separate color, um, you wanted that to follow the black. So then change that gear to the black global color. Here's the black. Now that it's the black, now everything black changes. So for example, you don't want it black, you double click on this global color and every single thing changes with the color. So there are like a million reasons to use this if you have a client or not only if you have a client, sometimes you're working on something and you may say, oh, you know what, I want to see what it looks like in another color but I don't want to go through and change every single thing on here. I know that the certain things I want one color, another thing I want another color. So in the end, you can just change everything with global colors. So I'm going to go through that really quickly one more time to show you how to do this. So let's just select nothing. I am going to, I don't care. Just I'm just showing you shapes now. 
I'm going to pick a rectangle, right? And I am going to give it a completely different color here. Okay, let's say this bright color here. I don't know. No, let's do a dark purple and I'll say close, right? And now I am going to, up here is that purple that's selected. I am going to click here which gives it, a, it becomes now a global color. So now if, what if I create, say, a donut and uh, something else, let's see, a teardrop up here. Now, be aware, I think it works, but sometimes I'm not chancing it, so I am gonna click that teardrop and hit the global color just to make sure that's the color I'm selecting right from there. So now if I decide I don't like that color, I just go, I don't have to select anything right now. I go up to double click on the global color and then I change that to, uh, let's see, how ugly can we make this? We change that to a really mid uh, maroon or burgundy. So that's how easy it is. And the, so in this lesson, not only did you learn global colors, but even something that I learned, I'm able to take a shape and still keep all the information about this shape and at the same time add so many different uh, live filters to it and still keep the information. I mean, I don't even know. I'm going to try one more thing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm making a fool of myself right now, but I'll just hit one more. And what other, what other thing could we do to this shape? Um, let's see. We did sphere. I think we can just do lens distort the shape and we can make it go in or out. I don't know. Don't get me. And or you can go like this. Oh, look at that. That's kind of gives it almost like a 3D appearance. So that's pretty cool. But even though we just did that, the point I'm getting at is when you go back to the shape, even though it's like that, you can now change things in the shape like what's this curvature I don't even know what that is let's see that's not oh that's go doing the curvature in right here and I can go back to that again one more time let's click the shape shape layer and notch size could be like that now so you still have that option but it still keeps all the live filters working so I think that was pretty cool. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you do, please click like and subscribe and have a good day. Bye. I hope you found these videos useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee at buymeacupofcoffee.com slash df. And I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.